Hello everyone, welcome. This is a quick demonstration of regression analysis using Excel. And I have a data set here that contains information about the sales uh, values of 20 franchisees of a company. And if you take a look at these values, some of them are larger values and some of them are smaller values. And I will try to understand more about this sales data. So let's just start our analysis with maybe adding another column right before column B. I'm just going to insert a column and I will just just call this as my factor and put zero there and drag this down. Now I will create a scatter chart between zero and the sales amounts. The reason for that is I just want to create a single dimension no graph, a scatter chart that represents my sales data on on the y-axis. So I'll create the sales data here. And what do I see here? Ignore the x-axis, just take focus on the y-axis. I could see that some stores are making more money and some stores are making less money. And this store that you see here, that's uh, close to $50,000 per month, but this store has little over ten thousand dollars per month and if I don't have any other information I can look at this data set and say these two stores seems they seem to be outliers they're like farther away from the others and uh, but these stores are more like uh, clustered together so on average you make certain amount of money and some stores are making little more than the average and some stores are making less than the average but there are some extreme cases so why do we have some extreme cases and why are they outliers uh, we are going to understand more about this in this video okay so I'm just gonna delete my graph you, if you want you could keep it uh, yours and I will delete this, I will delete my column B and I'll look at my sales data but I just want to create something here maybe in column G I want to see what the average of this sales data is and then what's the standard deviation the, the measure for uh, this Persian is and to do that, it's maybe a good idea to highlight the sales data by pressing Control Shift and down, and then naming this as sales. I have already done that, but you could do it one more time, sales and enter. Now Excel knows that this region that I highlighted is called sales. I do not need to highlight or just choose that region whenever I use a function. So I will say average of sales will provide me the average for the sales data and the standard deviation of the sales would give me this standard deviation value let me just take only two decimals and Excel does not round that the values so it only shows them as uh, rounded but uh, the other decimals places are in there stored in Excel so if someone comes and asks me how much money do these franchisees make and I'll take a look at it and say they make average about 31.42 like that is $31,422 and are you sure if someone just you know responds back and I say you know that's the average so some people make more than the average and some people make less than the average so my average does not contain all the information related to these ups and downs it only gives me the average value and I make some kind of an error there so let me just capture that error that I make and the error that I make is the amount here minus the average so I will just put a dollar sign for the average and so that I will keep using that number it may be a good idea just to put a dollar sign in front of one not on H but it doesn't hurt keeping the keeping both dollar signs but this is a good practice because we are gonna copy this down not to the right so we make an error that's the size of negative 10.65 
and we make some errors on the other ones and as you know that the average if you take a look at the errors in here their sum is gonna add up to zero because some of them are larger and some of them are smaller than the average now if I want to see the magnitude of this error what I could do is I could maybe just take an absolute va value of these errors but another way of doing that is maybe taking the squared errors okay so I'll just type squared error and I will square this error values and the difference between the absolute error and the squared error is the squared error would penalize the outlier so if there is an outlier let's say the difference is 20 the squared error is gonna add up to 400 whereas uh, when the error is 15 that ends up to be 225 but the absolute error does not take that into consideration the absolute error just looks at the the magnitude itself so I'm going to just take a look at all these squared error values and maybe just to take two decimals and as you can see the largest errors are magnified as in this cases and small errors are not as magnified because we are, when we take a square square of a larger number just gets to be bigger okay so we have the squared errors and how much squared errors do we make is this is the sum of the squared errors okay And that is going to be the sum of the squared errors. We're going to add up all the squared errors together. Sum of the squared errors. So we are making an error that's in the size of 1032.03 by taking the average. And if I do not take the average, let's say if I use uh, maybe another number, not the average, as uh, to indicate what sales is let me just take maybe 25 the error is larger okay and if I take maybe 32 the error is going to be a little bit larger the average gives you a, a good estimation but it still cannot tell you why the sales is 20.78 but not 31.42 now the values of sales depend on some other things and a uh, couple of other things could be where the location of this franchisee is or uh, if the franchisee is making enough amount of advertisement or if the store is is large or is located in a good place or is there a traffic so a lot of different factors that are affecting why the sales of these stores are different and we are not able to explain that's why we are having error size of 1032 let's just now move to the new sheet the sheet 2 and we'll take a look at here can we use one of those factors that we think that may have an effect on sales and we think that maybe the advertising budget may have some kind of effect cause an effect between uh, the sales and advertising budget so if we spend more money on advertisement we may expect maybe more sales and if this is the case do we see any relationship between these two variables and if I use the advertisement budget am I gonna be able to explain more why these numbers are smaller or why these numbers are larger that's our objective in this case so let's try to see the look at the sales and the advertisement budget but I think what I need to do is let's just try to look at here I may have to put the advertisement budget right before the sales to create my uh, scatter chart so let me just do that insert one more column take the sales move it here and delete this column so okay it's a little bit housekeeping here 
now I will highlight these two columns and control shift down and I will insert a scatter chart what do I see in this case so what I see here is I'm seeing that unlike the, the first case that I did not see anything the numbers were all listed on y-axis the sales amounts were different but now we have one more dimension and the other dimension is the the advertisement budget and when you have more budget on advertisement you have higher sales I could see some kind of a relationship there and it's not always when you see relationship between two variables it's not always the cause and effect as you have to have some kind of logical explanation for the cause and effect and for this case we have that logical explanation so the advertisement would affect the sales that's what we think and we see a relation between these two and can we quantify can we put this as a model and we kind of see that this relationship we could model this relationship as a linear line okay and then maybe we'll try to draw a line somewhere here let's try to do that insert a line and I'm gonna try to insert a line somewhere like this mm, didn't like that somewhat like this okay so I have this line where I am able to uh, somehow approximately maybe show the relationship between my uh, points and the my uh, the, the advertisement budget amount and the sales amount so the line that I put here is could be the best fit line indicating that the line that is closest to all data points in here or it may not be the correct one let's just enter uh, the values that I may be able to see here it starts from 15 okay so the intercept is somewhere around 15 and the slope is let's say from 15 to let's just take two numbers here this is 25 to 35 and that's maybe 12 to 27 25 to 35 that makes about um, 10 12 to 30 27 makes about 17 so let's say somewhere around 0.7 slope okay so let's say if this is the line that we are trying to fit what would be our estimated sales in this case if I use this intercept and slope values and I will delete this uh, chart for now so the estimated sales would be the intercept so if I just use the model the that linear line to estimate my sales so it's going to be intercept plus so let's just put the dollar sign on the intercept plus uh, this coefficient for the slope dollar sign times the advertising budget then that determines my sales so pretty close for the first franchisee and I enter these numbers in and I did my estimations for each sales amount let's just look at this chart again and we will just insert the scatter chart and what I'll do is I'm just going to click on this uh, straight line change the chart type and the estimated sales I'm going to use a scatter but using the smooth lines okay estimated sales the scatter with smooth lines now I'll try to use this let's just put a title for the chart and call it um, budget 
advertisement versus sales okay so I know that if, if some of you are saying that no you cannot just estimate those two numbers like that you have to use the the line of best fit I know that okay so we will try to uh, touch on that in the next upcoming video I just want to keep this short at somewhere around how many minutes are passed oh my god it's 15 minutes already okay so we're gonna cut this here and then the next video will just continue thanks for watching